we're hoping to wow the family with an amazing quick fig jam crostini with creamy burrata and a hearty main of beef cheek ragu with pappardelle. Beef cheeks. Just think the size of your little cheeks. Yeah. Imagine the size of a cow with them. And the cheek is right underneath here. Yeah. Mm. I want you to give them a really nice season with okay, salt and pepper cool. on there, please. So beef cheeks, very cheap. A cut that takes sort of a long time to cook. Yeah. But give it a bit of love. Let it cook in the oven. Mm -hmm. It comes out like That's a dream. It. A little touch of oil in the pan. What we want to do is get them really nicely coloured. Seared. Seared into the pan. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Lay away. See what that is? Um. Sitting at the dock of the. the beach. Bay. <laughs> Bay. <laughs> beach. And then I want the onion chunky because we're going to cook yeah. it for like. Three, three and a half hours. So you go down, 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 and then again there and there. So it doesn't overcook. So a really good colour on the cheeks like that. So how do you cook these at a restaurant if they take so long? They go in the oven, literally half past six, seven o'clock in the morning. Three and a half, four hours and ready for lunch. Mm. And the longer you leave them in their juices yeah. and the cooking liquor, the better. Three nice cloves of garlic. Good. Onions in and garlic in, please. Nice. Where's your baby? There it is. Yeah, that's good. Get those onions and that garlic really nicely coloured. Put the cheeks back in, please. Right, red wine in. Cool. Okay, and the red wine is going to deglaze the pan. So deglaze will basically sort of rinse all that flavour off the bottom of the pan. Yeah. Okay, because that's going to make the most amazing sauce. Now you could use tomato puree, but chopped canned tomatoes will make a much better sauce. I'm going to top that with some stock. So the secret of braising is having little of the meat exposed and 90% of it submerged. See them there? Yeah. They're like little crocodile heads popping up out of the water. Turn the gas off and leave the lid just off at the end there. If we had to cover it completely, the steam hits the top yeah. of the lid and all that water comes running back down. It's solar so. still. That's right. In the oven, 140, 150 for about three and a half to four hours. Good job. Boom. For pudding, I'm making one of my absolute favorite Italian desserts, panna cotta, with that quintessentially Italian flavoring, espresso. Start by immersing two leaves of gelatine in cold water and leave to soak. Into a small saucepan, add caster sugar, cream, milk, sugar, and a shot of good strong coffee. Gently bring to a simmer and remove from the hob. Squeeze out the soaked gelatine leaves and stir into the hot cream until completely dissolved. Pour your cream mixture into a jug and fill your molds just short of the rim. Rinsing your molds in cold water before filling will make it easier to get your panna cotta out once it's set. Leaving the fridge for at least two to three hours or overnight. To make your cinnamon hazelnut brittle, pour caster sugar into a pan and cook over medium heat until the sugar melts to a deep golden brown. Scatter toasted hazelnuts into the caramel. Dust with ground cinnamon and leave to set at room temperature. When your panna cotta is firm, Giving each mold a quick dip into boiling water should ensure a perfect stress-free exit onto the plate. Dressed with a shard of crunchy hazelnut brittle, nothing could be so deliciously elegant. Right, Captain Jack, quick run through. Panna cottas are nearly set. Beef cheeks are nearly cooked. We're gonna now do the fig and burrata crostini. Oh. Okay. Let's take the figs. We're gonna make a nice, slightly spicy fig jam. Take off the tops. Yeah. In half, and each half into three. Sugar, a touch of salt in there. Okay, we're making a jam, but we don't want it to be too sweet. And then these little babies. What are they? Ah. Uh, What's the shape? Stars, star anise. Star anise? Taken from the aniseed plant. Yeah. And when you dry them like that, it so intensifies the flavour. 
Really important to count how many we put in there, okay? Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five. So they're just there for the flavour and then take them right. out. That's right. Secret here, let's get that caramel going. So when I hear of jam, I don't think of caramel. No, but this is a very fast jam. Caramel's starting to colour. I want you very carefully to drop the figs in there. Good. So the juice out of the figs is starting to break down the caramel. You know what that is? Oh, sweet vinegar. I love that on my salad. You've got that sort of sweet and sour flavour. Leave that cooking for three or four minutes. Now let's slice our chipata. In Italian, crostini means little bits of toast, but it can be made out of leftover baguette, sourdough, or any crusty, open textured bread. We're staying authentically Italian with chipata. Season them, and then drizzle a little touch of olive oil on there. Both sides, really important, because we're going to grill the bread. Push it down. It's a lovely Very taste. Very lovely. Take it off. With the chipata toasted, we need to carefully extract the star anise pods from our piping hot fig jam. My right, Jack, we've got one little bugger to find. Oh, no. Go. Is it there? Yes, it is. Right. Now we've got the green light to crush. So the skin's disintegrated in that caramel. That looks so nice. While Jack carefully spreads the crostini with our hot fig jam, I can unveil the last element to our starter, the creamy Italian speciality, burrata. My oh, little money bags. Yeah. They can be delicious. This looks fun. Doesn't it? We need to season them lightly, drizzle over a little olive oil, and dust them with lemon zest. Can you imagine that? Sat there. And you tear some of that off and you stick it on top of that and... Mm. 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 Back to the main course. To match our hearty beef cheeks, I've chosen to use pappardelle. Rule number one when cooking pasta? Salt in first. Salt in first, good. Olive oil in, pasta in. Twist it round so you don't break it. Nice. Bring that back up the bowl. That's going to take about three or four minutes. Flat leaf parsley. Scrunch it up for me. Yep. And chop it. Now, wait to see oh, these wow. beef cheeks. Beauties. Mm -hmm. Look at them. Wow. They're oh, really look. soft. They're oh, very they're soft. Tiny. I want you to taste. Mmm. They're so good. Oh, Jack, you've just dribbled on your jumper. Joking. Seriously? <laughs> really? Right, drain the pasta. Salt, pepper, and pasta. A little drizzle of olive oil. And I want to put your fresh parsley. Nicely chopped. Nicely chopped. In. This is the magic bit, OK? You take a little ladle of the juice, put that at the bottom, and you put the pasta on top of that sauce. Ooh. Ooh. Honestly. Oh, my gosh. Your sisters are going to love you even more now. You know that? Uh, what about when you cook this for your girlfriend one day? Uh, Just tell know. her where you got the recipe from, will you? Promise? Promise. I don't want you stealing Daddy's thunder. One beautiful jaw on there. Two beautiful jaws on there. And then the third jaw. And then you go over with the sauce. How cool is that? Delicious. You've got the burrata. And I've got the cheese. Mm. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Don't be cheeky. Get it? <laughs>